Hey guys, Colin here, hope you're well. Today we're going to take a look at a malicious PowerPoint sample which takes advantage of an Office exploit known as CVE 2017-8570. particular exploit is pretty interesting. Uh, basically, when you open the file, it will have an object within it which uh, reaches out to a payload URL in order to download some additional malware. So we're going to run the malware and we're going to show you that from, a, from an exploit point of view and then we'll also de decompile the actual binary which is returned as well uh, just so you can uh, use some behavioral analysis and some static analysis skills in order to identify what's going on. This is the sample we're going to take a look at. I can grab it from VirusTotal. If you don't have an intelligence account, unfortunately, you won't see this download file button, but hopefully you'll be able to get the sample from other online repos. I've got a Windows 7 32-bit VM here. Uh, I've got the malware here on my desktop. I've got Burp Suite, which is on port 8080. And I've also got Process Monitor here going just with uh, filters. If I press Control and L, you can see processes created and processes exiting. So that's running away in the background, so that's great. What we're gonna do is just open up the PowerPoint and we can see that um, I get this weird object in the top left hand corner um, and actually what I have to do is double click that in order to uh, have any kind of interaction from the malware. We can see as soon as I do, I get this uh, request to boatbahamas.com uh, forward slash nels.xml. We can see I get a 200 response and we can see in the response of that is a load of B VB script uh, and in the VB script we can see some PowerShell stuff as well. We can also see a second get request to boatbahamas.com. This time uh, is for a nails.exe. And if I have a look at the response, we can see that in fact it does look like an executable. Uh, and then we can see a third get request. And this is to what looks like a C2. Uh, and we can see here to get request to post.php. And we can see the actual contents of the get request here. Uh, we can see some clipboard data from my machine, my machine name. Um, and the clipboard data is actually the, uh, the MD5 hash of this particular sample, which just so happened to be in my clipboard uh, at the time of running this analysis. So be very aware when when you, uh, when you are analyzing InfoStealer malware that uh, whatever you've got in your clipboard from your host even uh, will be uh, is sometimes available in your virtual machine as well. So just be wary of that one. So that's posted back the, the hash of the, the malware to the, to the uh, to malware author. And in fact, if I have a look in process hacker here, I can see that I've got this process running msoword.exe uh, in high integrity. And let me just suspend that process for now just so we can kind of poke around it at our leisure. Have a look in process monitor. I'll maximize the screen just a little bit here. Press control on E just to stop it because we kind of finished. We can see kind of what happened. So we got PowerPoint, which uh, launched PowerShell. We know that because of the response that we got from the XML request. And we can see that PowerShell also created another process, which was the MSO word.exe. And we can see here as well, there's a couple of other files which appear to be written from MSO word.exe, which is C program data mails.txt and also C program data browsers.txt as well. So that's pretty interesting. And actually, if you wanted to have a look at the PowerShell, I've taken the liberty of uh, copying this out. So I've got some Base64 encoded strings from the actual PowerShell. Uh, what we can do is just echo this into our uh, terminal window here and pipe that into uh, Base64 dash dash decode. And we can see actually the decoded PowerShell script, which was executing on the machine. And let me just flip back to where we've gone. Uh, flip back to Sublime here and we can just paste this in and we can see what the PowerShell is designed to do under the hood. Uh, so we can see, let's just kind of tidy it up as we go. We can see we've got a couple, of, a couple of arrays here. The first array is 11, 12, 14, 15, 16. The second array is the strings Word and Excel. And we can see we're in a for, we enter in a for loop. In fact, we've got a nested for loop. We've got one for loop, which is iterating over 11, 12, 14, 15, 16. The second one, which is iterating over the strings Word and Excel. So it's gonna look for each Office version. Um, so 11, 12, 14, 15, 16, and then look for each Word and Excel entry. And then it's gonna set the item property. We've got a few different things going on here. So it's gonna set the item and property in the registry. So here's the actual registry path. Uh, and we're gonna, we're gonna um, put an entry in here for the string VBA warnings and a value of one. Uh, so actually we're gonna disable v, um, Visual Basic, uh, so macro alerts, uh, macro warnings. We can also see here we've got another path which is being um, tested for, for, for the presence of, and then the prop item property is then being set. And this is to do with protected view, right? So we can see here the first one that's being set is disable internet files in protected view. Uh, so that's interesting. So it's gonna alter those, uh, it's gonna downgrade your security for protected view. We can see disable attachments in protected view. And then thirdly, we have this other one which is being updated as well. So we've got another set item property here, and that is disable unsafe locations in protected view as well. So it's downgrading the security of your office environments. We can also see the final thing here is this uh, new object system net um, web client download data. And then here's the request to the exe, the boatbahamas.exe, nels.exe. Uh, and then again, we can see that it's saved to the local app data folder named mso-word.exe. And then the subsequently the process is then started by PowerShell. So exactly what we saw here in process uh, monitor. 
What we can then do as well in Process Monitor, if you wanted to, is you could filter out on that particular process, MS uh, a word .exe, and then we can see, for example, all of the stuff that it's been, that it's uh, that it's written to the file system, uh, and we can do that as soon as Process Monitor kind of wakes up. Um, but also, what we do is just go back to our Burp Suite, uh, and we can see here if there's any kind of anything interesting from the response that we might. Uh, might have missed. Looks like it's, it starts out as VB script, and the VB script is just designed to invoke PowerShell. So it doesn't look like there's anything additional that we need to do there. But we've got three key network indicators that you need to kind of block in your environment. Uh, so that's definitely stuff that uh, if you're in a uh, in a corporate environment, you want to block on your on your local proxies. Let's just go right click and include msword.exe. We'll press Control and L just to update our filters a little bit. We'll remove the two filters that are here. We'll change the uh, what we'll do is change category. Uh, and we'll select is right, and then so wherever that uh, process is, is written to the file system, we'll be able to see it. And we can see here a couple of files that, are it, that it's written. We've got cprogramdatamails.txt, we've also got browser.txt as well. So we can right click and jump to that, and we can actually see the files that have been written. Uh, and in fact, there's nothing in there because I've got nothing saved in the browsers, I've got nothing saved in my email in terms of passwords that this info stealer would be interested in. You can also, if you wanted to, uh, use Process Monitor, uh, sorry, Process Hacker to have a look at the strings in memory. Uh, so you can right click and just have have a look at those particular strings. One of the things I always filter out for, just use regex, is the string HTTP, and you can see any kind of uh, network indicators that are associated. And in fact, we see those um, that uh, post uh, that get request to post.php uh, with the clipboard contents of the actual MD5, which I showed you before in Burp. Uh, so again, uh, other network indicators can be gleaned from this if there's any more. And we can see as well, there's probably uh, so we see here there's uh, the stuff which which uh, references nursesoft.net. Uh, where we go, here we go, nursesoft.net, which is uh, software freely available, which is very common for InfoStealer malware to use in order to dump the likes of saved passwords from browsers and saved passwords from emails, uh, et cetera, et cetera. So that's probably what the malware is doing. What malware is this? Well, this is actually a key-based InfoStealer. Uh, how do I know that? Uh, well, that's simply because we can actually decompile a malware and have a look and see what it's doing under the hood. And there's some strings in there which give it away. So let me just navigate to where that MSO word.exe uh, resides. And that's in a local app data folder. And then one of the first things I like to do is actually stick it into PStudio. So any binary I get, I stick into PStudio for some initial analysis. Uh, and hopefully that'll give us some information which we'll find of useful to us. First thing we can see here from the signature side of things is it's a .NET compiled binary. Well, that's good. So you can you could debug this if you wanted to in the likes of x64 or Ollie debug or what have you. But actually, there's easy there's tools which can that can help you get closer to the source code, uh, which may be of use to us. And we'll get to that in just a second. We can also see some strings here. Uh, we've got lots of plain text strings from the actual uh, sample. We can see keylogger. That's a bit of a giveaway. Download file. Wait. Random call. Set windows hook x, which is very uh, common for info stealers uh, and keyloggers to use. Uh, the fact that it's got the, the string keylogger in there kind of gives it away. A little bit and also if you scroll down a little bit as well uh, the c2 seems to be hard coded into the binary as well so that's all interesting let me close that one out we know the fact that it's um, a .NET compiled binary I like to use IL spy in order to decompile um, .NET compiled stuff let me just get rid of the stuff that it loads up when you first open it let me browse to local app data and we can see mso-word.exe and it'll decompile it for us. And then what we can do here is we can have a look at each of the classes that uh, uh, that, that uh, ILSpec can show us. We can see send, for example, it'll decompile it for us. And in fact, the source code is not even obfuscated. So we can actually walk through this. It's a little bit obfuscated in as much as it's using reverse strings and there's some encoding functions, but the, you know, essentially the code is plain text in, in .NET. So you can actually walk through this and understand exactly how the, how the malware is operating, how the actual keylogger is, is working. We can see recovery a mail, for example, this is how it's um, extracting your um, emails and passwords from uh, from the mail clients on your machines. The same from browsers. This is how it's uh, extracting. So we can see the target browsers: Chrome, Firefox, Opera, Safari, etc. We can see here here's all the syntax for how it actually generates. Uh, the usernames and passwords that you've got stored in your web browser and then subsequently uh, pipes that out to the C2. We can see as well, we've got this weird uh, class name here. Uh, and if, if, if you have a look down in the in the strings here, we can see there's some uh, decrypted or encrypted strings and also there's strings Keybase. And Keybase is a well-known info stealer, which you could probably Google and find some interesting write-ups on. But, um, you know, a bit of a dead giveaway, the fact that the strings for the actual malware are in here as well. Key hooks is uh, probably what it uses to obviously uh, hook the keyboard in order to capture anything that you type in. Um, so set windows hook X is, is definitely one of those API calls which you should be very wary of in your code. Uh, and loads of other classes which you can go through at your leisure. So uh, plenty of stuff to get your teeth into there.
Let's talk about protection mechanisms in terms of the actual exploit that we saw in PowerPoint, where well, you definitely want to keep your Microsoft Office suite up to date because that's uh, pretty critical for patching side of things. You want to protect yourself against these particular exploits. So, you know, patch, patch, patch is definitely key. As malware analysts, you've obviously extracted some key network indicators out of the malware. So we've got three there. We had the two Boat Bahamas requests, and we also saw the C2 that was used uh, to pipe back the, the clipboard data. Those are key network indicators which you need to block in your uh, environment. If you're in a proxied environment, then you could block them on your local proxy. You could also update those with web content filtering solutions as well, uh, like a blue coat or uh, other, other solutions as well, which may, you may use in your environment. Um, and you know, realistically, you want to make sure that you're updating as well the uh, your antivirus engines. So, if you're in again, if you're in a corporate environment, then these are uh, hashes which you want to update your your AV engine with in order to push out extra DATs to protect yourselves against for the, against this particular site, um, this particular malware. So hopefully that's of use to you and I hope you, you've learned some tools and techniques that you can use in your lab environment to, to analyze these, these kinds of exploits and this kind of malware as well. Uh, if you like the video, then obviously like uh, the, uh, the channel. Uh, and if you love the video, please subscribe. And also you can follow me on Twitter at CyberCDH as well. Thanks, guys. Cheers.